necessary word for everyone that diligently seek him. Our pastor said, get involved. Please, I want you to lift those hands and say, thanks unto you, Lord, for keeping me alive among the living, for making me who I am today. And a singer says, that I'm alive today. Ah, it's just by his grace you are living. I want us to give him thanks this morning for he is worthy. He is the faithful God who never fell. He never fell his own. And he can never see you and fail. He would not fail in our time. Father, we bless your name. We lift you high and exalt your holy name. Blessed be your name this morning because only you, only you is the true living God. I want you to say a sweet thing to his ear. He kept you alive for a reason. You are living because of God's glory. He deserves have a glory from you. There is a glory. There is a glory he wants to take out of your life where you don't know. I want you to say thank you for keeping me alive. Thank you for keeping me alive. Thank you for preserving me and my family. Father, we give you praise. We exalt your name. Blessed be your name, Lord. Even in this period, we say thank you. We glorify your name for you alone is worthy. Blessed be your name this morning. For bringing us together once again to fellowship, oh God, in your presence. We say, have your way. Take your place, Adonai. Come and rule and reign. And let your name alone be glorified. We say, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Make a name for yourself in this service. That all glory will return back to you. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. to God. I said glory to God. I want, I want you to smile on somebody. Smile at somebody and say thank you for being here this morning. Smile at somebody. Just smile. Give somebody a smile this morning. Give somebody a smile this morning. Hallelujah. Give somebody a smile this morning. Glory to God. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. You are welcome this morning. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We honor you. Mando We are going to take our hymn this morning, Christ alone. I like us to i like us to take it meditatively and prayerfully in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Christ alone.
Open your mouth and worship to him. Open your mouth and worship to him, O God. Linda la ba sheke de le bo shu da la ba do sheke ya. Le mantori gala ba do sheke de ke le bo shanda ya. Mantori ke le le bo shata la ba do sheke de ke le bo Still in worship, I want you to lift your hands and say thank you, Jesus. He is the Alpha and Omega, the Lily of the Valley, the Rose of Sharon. I want you to say something to him because he lived forever. Hallelujah! If you are in the house of God, I need a response. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. I don't know if you are ready to dance unto the Lord this morning. As for me, I'm ready. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Imela, onye wanyi imela, eh. Imela, okwara toku imela, mama. Imela, onye wanyi imela, eh. Imela, okwara toku imela, mama. Imela, onye wanyi imela, dalo. Imela, okwara. Thank you. 
Tente Jehovah. Ani moya mi gwe. Ani wo tente Jehovah. Ani moya mi gwe. Ani wo tente mi mi ba. Ani boya. Oh, ani wo tente ni de ma ba se. Ani gwe. Oh yes.
coming again. He's not coming like the baby that he came through. The Bible says when he shall come, all eyes shall see him. When he shall come in his glory. Hallelujah.
the death of our heart. Let's in, in view of the fact that he's coming back again. pastors is preaching this morning and I have this singular honor to receive to the microphone our own reverend Peter Odianose as he shares the word of God please let's honor the man of God this morning hallelujah thank you sir just then heavenly father to your word through you miracle. And this morning we believe and we agree to obey by your word. By every word that is spoken by you and every word that is spoken to us by your means. Heavenly Father, give us a tentative ear and a receptive heart that we will believe you and our miracle will come to us. Thank you, Father, because you have done it before you can do it again and again. Jesus' name, I have prayed. Have you Thank you. I think I appreciate, I have to appreciate the choir for blessing us this morning. God is coming back again. Christ is coming back again. And every eye 
we see him. Every eye we see him. Praise the Lord. This morning I'm going to be speaking briefly on a title The Miracle of Obedience. The Miracle of Obedience. What am I saying about the miracle of obedience? If you add, add obedience to your faith, because you cannot add faith to anything, if you add obedience to faith, it produces miracles. There is no place in the Bible where people obey the word of God in faith and did not produce a miracle. And today, we that are seated here are going to receive miracles from God. No matter what has been your problem, what you have been praying God for, today, today, this very day, you are going to receive it from God. Because when you obey God, He is going to bless you. Mary told the disciples, He said, Whatever He said, do it. This morning, we are going to be doing whatever God said. And we bring blessing to our homes and to our life. Praise the Lord. I'm starting my reading from the book of John. John 21, 5 to 9. We are in the usual terrain. Everybody knows the story. When Jesus was invited to a marriage feast. He was there. He was not called to the high table. There is no scripture written in that in the Bible that Jesus was called to the high table. He was not called to the high table. I'm not sure he was introduced as we do today. He said, somebody is here, is this, is this, is this, is this, let's welcome him. No. He was seated with his disciples. And when they have a problem, they know where to go. The problem we have today is Christians, when they have problems, they don't know where to go. Where they would have started from is where they end up. After wasting all they have. Like the woman with the issue of blood in the scripture. The scripture recorded she had wasted all her resources. Before she chose to say, if I can touch the hem of his garment. She would have started from there. And saved all he was, all she wasted. Our problem is that we start from where we are not supposed. We spend all our resources and waste them. Before we now realize where we are supposed to be. In that book of John, John 2, from verse 5, can I add it? John 2, 5. John 2, 5. They came to the mother, not to Jesus this time, they came to the mother. Mother. Because they know the potency of her son. And they know what the son can do. But they cannot just go to the son direct. If you have to go and beg something from a bishop, you don't just call him. You went to his aid. Can I see? I want to see your mother. They went to the mother. Believing the mother has so much influence on the son. Mama, please, oh, we have a problem. Oh. We know it's not your, you cannot do it. We know you have somebody, your son can do it. Please, help us. John 5, let's read it. Let's read it together on the screen. His mother said unto the servant, that is verse 5, whatsoever he said unto you, do it. From this pulpit, Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, what? Where 
just came out from this prison. From this prison. How are you taking them? Do you just take them as the work, as the word of a mere man? Or you take them as the word of God? Mary told them, whatever he said, do it. And what he told the servant, the disciples, was not something they could, how can? They are telling you there is no wine. Instead of sending to uh, Mission Road, you are telling them to go to Ogba and go and fetch water and feed the water pot. So a man, an ordinary man, is nothing. But because the man that told them whatever he said, do it. I'm telling you this morning, whatever word came out of this pulpit from the pastors, do them. It will do you good. Whatever he said, do it. They went and fetched water and put it in the pot. The end thereof, you all know what happened. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You see, when you we are taught is that it's only when Christ said it, when he's present. It is not true. Any child of God, any servant of God that said something and you do it, a miracle follows. This one reminds me of a mere servant from Israel in the house of Naaman. Just a servant. Maybe she was in the kitchen because she wouldn't have the, 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 the permission to stay on the sitting room. She was the chicken and mama a word. Nobody seek her concept. She was not preaching from the pulpit. She was not speaking to the audience. She was not speaking to the madam of the house. She said it. While she was doing her daily food, maybe washing plates and uh, cleaning the floor. Then she said, Oh, if that man, if this man was in my country, this sickness would have been cured. Of I'm sure she's not even aware that the madam of the house or someone else had her, had her. Then somebody told Neymar. Neymar's position, if it were today, we not take a, a mere word from a servant as anything. But because she's from Israel, the chosen people of God have won in the past. He said, if this man can meet a prophet in my native land, this leprosy will have been over. In this episode, two servants prophesied to Naaman. Two servants, her housemaid and his servant in the, in the, in the, office, in the office. Naaman went to meet the king. And I told the king that I had what this is what a servant in my house, the little girl in my house said. The king took it very serious. And he wrote a note. Whatever he said, do it. He wrote a note and gave him the note. Say, okay, go to Israel, give this one to the king of Israel. Tell him, I said, Tell him, I said. He presented the note to the king of Israel. 
And the scripture says the king of Israel tore his dress and said, This man is looking where he will create a problem between us and him. Then Elijah have heard of him. He said, Send him to me so that he will know there is a God in Israel. Today you will know there is a God in this place. That whatever comes, that see, our pastor, every day he labored to tell us and to direct us where we should go. To tell us what to do. As many as I've obeyed, they, they always come up here to testify of what God has done for them. I want you to tell yourself, I will be one of them from today. Raise up your hand and say, I will be one of them from today. Whatever he said, do it this way. Elisha said, call that man to come and meet me here. The man came. The worst thing that ever happened to Naaman is that the, the, the man they sent him to did not even come out. The man did not even come out. No attempt. It's like you have a problem. You come to the pastor. Pastor is in his office. You meet uh, my sister, my daughter, Nena. He said, uh, please, I'm pain. I have a problem with my problem. My problem want to kill me. I want, please, I want to see the pastor. Nena will say, wait for me here. Pastor, there is somebody there. He's breathing from the nose and from the head and from the ear. I don't know what to do. He said he wants to see you. Pastor will say, okay. Tell him to go to the tap there. Take water and wash his face. Or wash her face. And go home to be healed. How many of us here will be happy when you are going away? He said, this is the church I belong to. This is the church. I, 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 I spent all my money in this church. This is my family. I now have problem. The pastor did not even come out. It's not the pastor coming out that will make you what God wants you to be. It's the word that comes out of his mouth. Whatever he said, do it. Elisha said to Ogalema, <laughs> captain of the host of Syria, the major general. He said, me, so I go and back in that river. It's not the river in my, my, in my, in my village better than this river. I, that I should go there <laughs> as they were going. Another servant prophesied to him. Another servant prophesied to him. As they were going, I'm not sure that one came to the front. He was at the back. Yeah. Uh, Daddy, you know, when you have people staying with you at home, who knows what God is? They don't come to your front. I'll be telling you something. Uh, Daddy, Daddy, wait, I want to tell you something. This man must have been the shivering in his organ. It's just only you dip yourself inside the water. If you dip yourself inside the water, it do not happen. Eh, we know. You don't you don't go and do it first. Do whatever God said you should do. And the miracle will follow. I, I was listening to the pastor, I think it was last Sunday, where he said, if you are expecting a baby, go and start buying baby things. Many people here thought he was joking. You cannot buy baby teeth or waste. For that you are buying alone, God will bring the baby. Because you obey the servant of the Lord. And you will prosper. Whatever he said, do it. You are looking for a job. You came to the pastor and said, I'm looking for a job, pastor. What do I do? You are looking for a job. What type of job do you want to do? Okay. Uh, that, in the past, you know they wear suit. They wear good trousers. Go and buy a, buy a pair of suits. And be, and be ready. Uh, the interview will say you apply for. 
you will be called. So, yeah, I think they will say, we give you a letter to somebody. That's what we want. Give you a letter to somebody. The letter has been sent to somebody. Higher than every somebody. Which is God Almighty. Your report has been sent to God Almighty. And he's going to do it. Praise the Lord. In 2 Kings 5.14. Let's put it there. Let's see what, what happened. 2 Kings 5.14. 2 Kings 5.14. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came back like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was he was clean. I have a friend when he wants to say this, he was clean. He was clean like the flesh of a baby. You know the flesh of a baby? Very tender. Neymar, I'm sure Neymar will have checked himself. Huh? I have been suffering of these things. There is somebody here. Whatever he said, do it. Whatever it will take you to do what God said, do it. Do it. You are not going to miss anything. Praise the Lord. Like the woman Elijah was sent to. God sent Elijah after so many wahala. He was the one who prophesied there be no neither rain or dew. He said with his mouth. And then God said, Okay. Since you said it and you are my servant, I believe. Whosoever is here is the servant of God. He's telling you the right thing. Elijah said, according to my word. That was the story. According to my word. And God has shown that word. Then he first of all to the brooks. Took him away from the brook to go and meet a, 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 a widow. When he, got, when he got to the city, he was entering the city, he saw a woman. He was picking, picking a uh, few sticks. He said, hey, madam, wait, 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 wait. I'm not sure he introduced himself. Had he been introduced, he introduced himself to the woman, the woman would have said, no, please, you are not a prophet. He said, go and give me water. Go and give me water to drink. It's very easy to bring water. He said, okay. He said, hey, 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 hey. No, 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 no. When you are coming, bring a little food for me to eat before I drink the water. That was the way. How those boys will say, yeah, well, I don't gas. The woman said, you know, see, this man, he don't bought the whole thing. He started narrating her story. After the narration of her story, the man did not shift ground. That is why when the when the when the when the man of God tells you something, it's not going to shift ground because you are crying. When he's taking what is in your hand that cannot better your life out, so that God will reveal it to something that will better your life, it is not a punishment. So many people would have said, this man is punishing this woman. He told you as a little fool. Say, go and bring it for me. If you have what cannot better your life, give it to God, and God will better your life. The woman said, okay. Don't you see what I'm doing? Don't you see the, I have only one seed that I'm going to use to bake the little flower. That tells you the this, the, 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 this quantity of what she was going to cook. The man of God said, I know what, you are, what I'm asking to do now. First of all, prepare the first one and bring it to me. 
and now prepare for your death and the rest of your household. Prepare the first for me and prepare the rest for your household. Which is a very serious thing. Did the woman do what the prophet of God said she did? And what happened? They had enough to eat for the whole season. Whatever God asks you to do. It's not only giving God is asking us to do. God is asking us to be a part of what is happening in where we are. Why not do it? Because we have so many members seated here. They have been here for five, six, seven years. They don't belong to any group. Are you telling me God is not asking you to do something? Children department, you are not there. Agape, wait after the service, you are not there. Youth, wait after the service, you are not there. Women, wait after the service, you take off. Men, meeting, you are not there. What is God asking you to do in the house of God? He just asks you to come and sit down and go away after the service? No. Obedient with faith produce miracles. You have to obey what God is telling you. You don't expect God to come down again. He's not coming down again to come and instruct you to do something. He is coming back the last day when all I will see him. But this time, he has his pastor, his servants, his prophet, who is teaching out his word, telling you this is what God said you do. This is what God you said do. This is what God said. Anybody, if you think because he said by the pastor, it is not Christ. <clears throat> My brother, you missed the way. Whatever he said, do it. In Luke 5, 5 to 7, you know what happened? Many of us would have been angry, seriously, that this man don't even know what is happening to me. That is Peter and Jesus. Let's, look, let's read Luke. Luke 5. In verse 5, you know, you all well know the stories. Peter went to fishing at the time that the fish are looking for food to eat. That when he throw his net, the net will catch as many. That is at night. The Bible says he labored throughout the night. There was nothing to show for it. Your 24 hours of labor cannot be compared with your one hour of favor. God will favor us today. And we will receive his abundance. Then Peter went out and said, okay, since there was nothing to take home, let me go and wash my net. It where he was washing his net that a man show up, Jesus showed up. He told him, Peter, wait. I want to use your boat. How many of us here who will go for an interview and they said you will hear from us and they test not go to the some of them will do work tomorrow and you will come to the church and pastor said we will need volunteer to sweep this floor next Saturday how many of you will volunteer how many of us then he will say you know there is always a reward for labor in the house of God how many of us we say pastor I will volunteer This was the case of Peter. 
He labored all night. Nothing to show for it. I'm washing my net to take home. Believing for another day of labor. Then this man is coming to tell me now I should give him my food. Let's read that. Let's, just, let's read that scriptures. Luke 5 5 to 9. And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night. You don't need to toil, beloved. As children of God, we don't need to toil. That is not our portion. But some people choose to toil. Simon said, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, nevertheless, that's where I want you to put yourself. Nevertheless, at your word, I will do what you say. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let them. Let, um, You must have been attending prayer meeting since the beginning of this year. And the pastor is telling you on Saturday morning, we are going to pray for the sick. Your mind, some people's mind will just go, this pastor said, you're not going to let person pray. He has been praying for us Sunday after Sunday. Is it this Saturday that we make a difference? I know we'll be good self. No, I will tell my house. That special that Sunday will make a difference. That Sunday will make a difference in your life. Peter said, nevertheless. Nevertheless. At your word, I will lay down the nails. Let me tell you. Let me, give, I'm giving a, let me give you a testimony. Pastor, yesterday we traveled to your place. Myself, my wife, our brother, my brother in laws, we traveled to their place. They lost their stadium in six times. They have to commit the body to the end. We went with two cars. As we were coming, one of the cars had a problem. We went to Ogeli. What's that place? Then we look for a, a repair and electrician came and he said, Oh, it's the fuse. Fuse the fuse. Start the car. The car was working. We were all rejoicing. We left. When we get to Olobo, the thing, same thing happened again. The passport in Olobo, not even the passport. We were there. We had a rope we thought it was good enough to throw a van. We used one of the big pickups, the one who throw the other jeep. Before we move, I think give way. We join it again. We put hands, we push it to the top. Start it again to move. This time it was around 7 30 or, or to 8. There is no place to rush to go and look for a rope to buy. We were there. What do we do? We don't we won't allow this car to sleep here. What do we do? One of the ladies that we are with one of the women, one of my brother in law's wife. He said, I had a solution. What's the solution? He said, this Ashok is tied with tie. We can tie them together. They are stronger than that rope. We can tie them together and push the car to beneath. Some of us say, ah. Some of us say, ah, ah, what is this? That's one, the rope. He said, if we tow it, 
wife pull her own. The junior sister pull. Praise God. The junior sister pull her own. The brother's wife pull her own. We tie them together. We tie them to the jeep. We tie to the hillocks truck. That's what bring, brought us to Benin yesterday. I got to my house yesterday after 11. If we did not believe what she said, we would have, maybe we have asked some people to sleep with the car. The rest of us married the other one home because we were at 10, 5 5 in this car. That when a child of God is saying something to you, don't commonize it. Don't commonize it. That is the problem the church has today. It's not that we cannot pray. We prayed. If, we, if pastor said tomorrow it'll be all night, you will see more members than this one you are seeing. Tomorrow all night prayer. We are going to call heaven down. Then after you pray all night, do you believe in your prayer? Do you believe in your prayer? Do you do what you are asked to do? Even after the all night? If you add obedience to faith, it will produce miracles. I have seen things done by just merely obeying a servant of God. I have seen things done just by obeying a word from the pulpit. It said on the pulpit, I will do it. Then, there was a woman in the scripture in Second Kings. This woman, the husband, he, the woman knew the husband very well. He went to go and meet the pastor. So many people, so many members in the church, so many men and women don't know how the, the, the fate of their spouse. So many of us don't know the fate of your spouse. You don't know the standing of your spouse in things of God. You don't know what your spouse can do you don't know what she cannot do. This woman went to meet the servant of God. He said, look, my husband served you, served God faithfully. My husband served God faithfully. And you know he's now dead. He left behind a lot of debts. Let's read Second King four, from that three. Second King four. Second King four from that three. <laughs> then he said, after the woman had narrated her story, what the man of God could arrive at, it's something none of us will take. Because if you, if I come to complain, I'm a co-pastor to to to, to Reverend uh, Reverend Daidi. If I come to him tomorrow, I say, Ah, my God, at the top. You see, you see, my pocket is very, you know, we Christians. That's how we say, my, my pocket is very plenty. You don't want to say same thing. You thought you are you are speaking in faith. My pocket is empty. I need something to fill it. And you now say, okay, what do you have in your house? If I have something in my house, why come in to meet him? That is the cross of the matter. That is the problem we have today.
when he made the man of God, do me again, my dear. Make I, make we see it. Make I, when he made the man of God, he said. Then he said, "Go borrow vessels. Go borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors. Even empty vessels, borrow not a few." Verse four. And when thou art come into thy into in, in thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and shall pour out into the vessel and thou shalt set aside that which is full five so she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her children and brought the vessel to her and she poured out six and it came to pass when the vessel was full that she said unto her son bring me yet a vessel and he said unto her there is not a vessel more and the oil is paid. <laughs> you come to my house, you are hungry. I say, what do you have in your house? Then after I say, okay, go, go and put water on the fire and put water inside and light the gas. So, you, when you are in my house, you say, are you sure pastor is well again? I went to him to complain of something. He's telling me, go and put pot on the fire. I tell you, it works. This United States great preacher give a testimony. Himself with 13, the mother has 13 of them as children. Not this one where you bought a bone one or two. He had 13 of them as children. One morning, there was nothing. There was no reason to own the gas. I'm not sure there was even gas to own. Then the mother said, okay. Uh, arrange the dining. He put the plates. He put everything. He said, okay, let's pray. Let's bless the, the meal. <laughs> I'm sure some of the children will put their eye. Uh, is, is our mother still normal? He arranged the table. There is nothing. He's asking us to pray. they like it or not, the mother start praying. Before they say amen, there was a knock on the door. The mother put his amen. Who is that? Auntie Ko. Oh. Okay. Auntie Ko opened the door with a basket of food. And the children started looking at their mother. Tear was running down some of their cheeks. If you obey the word of God, there is nothing he cannot do. There is nothing. You may think it's taking time. It's not taking time. At the appropriate time, he will surely do it. God doesn't delay. Ah, Pastor preached a sermon that they say, if when God delays, you thought it was a joke. It's not a joke. God can decide to wait. The woman obeyed the servant of the Lord. And she sent the children. They went to town. Borrow empty. The people will be laughing at them. Now empty jerry can they borrow now. What do you want to get? What do you get with my empty jerry can? There, are some, there was one day I was coming to church to preach as a pastor. I don't have money in my pocket. I don't have offering to give. I don't have offering to give. And when I preach finish, I will say, let's offering time. Then me will say offering time. There's no offering in my pocket. I did not tell my wife. I did not tell anybody. I just dress fine. Because the Archbishop told us, if you don't have money in your pocket, dress well when you are going out. Because if you if you press somebody's leg, the person will say, sorry, sir. Because the way you dress. 
if you dress rough, they say, well, I bay. Or, or uh, this useless massage, you call it press my leg. Then that very day, I dress very well. I stay at my beckon, waiting for my wife and the kids already make me go, go to church. I had a knock at my gate. God told somebody that your, his servant has no money in his pocket. I did not call anybody. And this person is coming from a distance of about 65 kilometers. He parked on my gate and knocked at the door and bring money and give to me. He said, we are just going. I am in a hurry. He did not wait to see the tears that were rolling down my cheeks. There is nothing our God cannot do. All you need to do is to obey him. If you obey him, he is able to do all things. This woman starts from the first Jerichan. The small bottle of oil. You have one small bottle of oil. You have Ragolis water. Ragolis bottle full of oil. You are bringing 25 liters from here to the gate there. It takes faith to do that. It doesn't just take mere faith. It takes a real faith to do that. You see that? That's what it says. Put food, carry it 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 Uh huh. Where will? Sakmama, where is the rest one? He said, he, we walk at the whole beneath, no empty this thing again. He looked at the bottle in her hand, still filled up. He went to the man of God. <laughs> he said, look at the whole thing. He said, okay. Sell them. Pay your debt. Use the rest to feed for this time. You know that? I'm telling you today, if you can add obedience to faith, your miracle is on the way. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We bless your name. We thank you for what you have done for us. We ask we will receive abundance of miracle from you. And your name will be glorified. Thank you for the torment that are waiting to carry children. Thank you for the pocket that are waiting to keep money. I pray you will bless us as never before. In Jesus' name, I pray this morning. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Glory to God. Add faith. Add faith to your what? Add obedience to your faith and you will see miracles. Once again, let's celebrate pastor this morning. Thank you very much. That word is for everyone because there will be miracles in your house in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I said there will be miracles in your house in Jesus' name.